It is high school playoff football action here on WOSN, home of the Fostoria Redmen. <laughs> As they like to <laughs> flicker here, and oh, good, that was intentional. <laughs> I, I, hope, I sure hope that was intentional. <laughs> and they turn the lights out. All right. <laughs> Uh, here at uh, Fostoria Memorial Stadium for WOSN High School Football Action. Columbus Grove and Carey in this Region 22 semifinal. Patrick Hamler, our never goal here with you. And this one should be a terrific matchup. Getting ready to tee it off and get going. Both these teams riding uh, great winning streaks. Um, both teams coming in here winning nine games in a row in what should be a tremendous matchup tonight, Dar. No, it should be. And, you know, both teams are, are league champions in their own right. So, yeah, I'm expecting a real good, good matchup between these two. A lot of running. I can expect that. You know, you got a great running back on uh, Columbus Grove side and Trenton Barraza. You know, a six foot two junior, 175 pounds, and over 1,500 yards rushing this season. And you know, on the flip side, you got Eli Steen over on the other side for Kerry. You know, a, a six foot, 240 pound uh, running back for those guys who's got over 1,100 yards. So you can expect a lot of running. They're good quarterbacks out there, too. And Kyler Carter Smiley for Kerry and Landon Best for Columbus Grove. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen in this? Not going to be much in the way of West Coast offense in this one. Here's a handoff right up the middle. I think the ball came out. And I think they're going to mark him down just around the line of scrimmage. So that's going to be a quick evasion of danger for Columbus Grove. They'll hang out to the football on second down. Well, I'll tell you what, this carry defense, when you look at these guys, they've got 18 interceptions this season and eight fumble recoveries. So this is definitely a, a very op op opportunistic. That word there. Opportunistic. You're yeah, going for opportunistic. There you there go. You there go. You go. Uh, defense for uh, carry this carry team. So Columbus Grove's going to really have to hang on to that football. And Best is going to keep this one on second down and is met right at the line of scrimmage by that ferocious carry defense that we were just talking about. The tackle made by Dwayne Gibson, the uh, six foot senior, and that's going to bring up third down. Yeah, Gibson with 37 tackles this season, 11 and a half tackles for loss. And there you saw right there, you know, they, they shoot in there. They got some great linebackers on this carry team. Their defensive backs do a real nice job of covering up, you know, and letting those linebackers do their thing. So now third down and nine. Best in the gun. Motion, best looking. Let's this one go deep. It's going to be short, but oh caught my. anyway. What an adjustment there as Zane Steckschulte brings that one in for a Dale Concrete first down. I thought that was going to be short oh, and maybe I, intercepted. I, yeah, and, and it should have been really because the defensive back we definitely had the uh, positioning on the inside on that one there. You know, but, you know, the ball just went over his hands and. Steckshoulder just did a great job of concentration. That's nine catches now, or seven catches now for Steckshoulder this season. So, you know, that one there, nothing bigger than that one. Saw the replay on that and the structure, instant replay, and now fresh life for this Columbus Grove offense, and that is going to be bottled up on first down. Best nowhere to go. This carry defense getting in there on the stop. That was Alex Putnam, among others, in there on the stop. And you know, something I noticed about this carry defense, you look at the tackles for loss that these guys have there are a lot of ridiculous numbers in terms of tackling for loss between oh, these crazy teams. numbers and sack numbers too if you look at those as well you know they you know like i said they, they really have a tendency to get in the inside you know get inside there and, and really put the pressure on the quarterback best looking long again across the middle and that one nearly intercepted was looking across the middle was trying to hook up with kyle hopkins and putnam Almost came up with the interception. Actually, that's Doug Pinkerton who uh, almost came up with the pick. And Putnam's one of those guys, we were talking about tackles for loss, came into the game, uh, 23, 90 tackles, 23 and a half tackles for loss. 24 now in this contest, and that, that tells you they really get behind the line oh, of scrimmage. absolutely, and five sacks to go along with that, and fumble, one fumble recovery. Let's throw that in there as well <laughs> right, for that yeah. young man. But right there, Kyle Hopkins did a nice job of turning from offensive player to defensive player and breaking up that pass because it was right in the hands of the defensive back. Best in trouble, set up the screen, pass is complete. Brady Basinger with the completion, has a blocker and is gonna to get to the 30, but it's gonna be about two yards short of the Dale Concrete first down. So decision time already here, I think, for Andy Schaefer. Do you decide to go for it or do you try and uh, pin them? Because I think we're at a field goal range here at this point. Yeah, I think so too. The only, you know, 
Evan Beerhoff is their field goal kicker, and he's tried two for four so far in field goals, but this is a little bit of out of his range for sure. So they will go for it, fourth down and three, best by himself, and we're going to have a Metzger Financial Services timeout as the Bulldogs are going to talk this one over. 9.24 here in the first quarter as we are just underway here from Fostoria. And interesting thing about uh, this place, the, the home of the 1912 national champion. I said national champion, Fostoria Redmen. And uh, had to look that up. I, yeah, we, I, asked, yeah. I, I asked someone here if they knew anything about that, and they didn't. And the Fostoria Redmen High School football team of 1912 scored 596 points, and their opponents scored zero. Wow. They won by an average of 74 and a half points that year. And when you do something like that, you Who's know, going to if, if you want to I mean, call yourself national champion, you can call yourself anything you want. If um. you disagree with that, then let's get on the field and settle it. You're really no one was interested. <laughs> so here we go, fourth down and three. Grove looking for another first down. Best on the roll pass, complete oh, to the perfect. 25, and gets the Dales concrete first down. The Barraza showing the hands off as well. His eighth catch of the year, and that will move the sticks. Great play call there by the Columbus Grove uh, coaching staff on that one there because they knew what uh, Kerry was expecting. They were expecting some kind of handoff, of, you know, trying to run Bras on that one, and they sent him out for the pass instead. Just good play calling. So Columbus Grove doing a great job of keeping the drive alive and Barraza to the 25 and nothing else. He is swallowed up by a host of Blue Devils on that play. And really, when you look at it, Patrick, I mean, this particular drive here, you know, the opening drive for Columbus Grove, you know, the way the Carries defense has been playing, you'd think they would be back here on their own 30-yard line, but they keep moving forward, moving forward, and they get that big play when they get need to have it, you know. So, Carry, even though they're, they're playing great defense at this stage, Columbus Grove keeps moving forward, you know, steadily forward. Here on second and 10. Best with a pocket, throws it, pass is oh, intercepted. Across the middle once again, and this time went to the well one too many times as Austin Niedercore comes across the middle and picks it off the first turnover of this one. And Kerry was close on a play here a few plays ago, and that time they get the turnover. Now that's interception number seven for that young man for Kerry. You know, like I said, this team has 18 interceptions this season, and you're, you're, you're right, Patrick. You go to the well one too, one time too many, and you know Carey's going to be you know, right there to pick it off for him. So that'll bring this Carey offense back out, or out for the first time, I should say, led by Carter Smiley. And as we've uh, mentioned a couple times in this broadcast, this is going to be a run-heavy attack we're going to see from the Blue Devils. And here we go, running right up the middle and going right through the Columbus Grove defense right up the middle. Nathan Broadman for a Dales concrete first down. Well, Nathan Broadman, a, a six foot four, 225 pound senior, you know, 16 carries, 70 yards coming into this game, six touchdowns. So he's a great compliment to Eli Steen back there. And this offensive line, when you look at it for this carry team, they're, they're coming across here at 220, 190, 255, 290, and 262. So he's got big boys in front of him to run behind. And Broadman, 6'4, 225, Putnam, 6'4, 200. They got a lot of. Uh, Bulk there that can run the football as well. And there's the aforementioned Eli Steen, six foot 240, only a sophomore. So uh, both of those uh, measurements can go up from here. He picks up five on that play. Yeah, 161 carries, 1140 yards, 14 touchdowns for Eli Steen this year. It's going to be a real challenge for these uh, linebackers for Columbus Grove just to keep them, you know, because once these guys get into the secondary, it's going to be all up to Columbus Grove's linebackers to stop them. And this time Columbus Grove is there stopping him for a loss. And, you know, it's going to make the running even, I guess you'd say, that much more impressive for Kerry because you look at Columbus Grove's defense and everyone was then 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Like, they are not concerned at all that Kerry is going to run, the, uh, is going to throw the ball at all. And they're still getting yardage on this Grove defense. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, not that Carter Smiley can't throw the ball. He's thrown it 105 times. He only hit 52% of his passes, but 971 yards. He's thrown nine touchdown passes. He's been intercepted five times, so mm -hmm. he will throw the ball. So now third and seven. 
Smiley's going to keep it. Looking oh, for a daylight look and not finding any. How about Trevon Baxter getting in there on the stop for the Bulldogs and it's fourth down. Well, they almost got him the first time around when he came around that corner down there. And Baxter then finished him off after that. Said, nope, you ain't going to get around that corner the rest of the way. So a loss of six on that play will force a carry punt. So the Bulldogs, after giving up a nice run on first down, bow up and force the punt by the Blue Devils. The bow's only averaging 27 yards a punt. Not a bad punt. It's going to be fielded by Barraza at the 41-yard line, showing some shiftiness and gets about six yards on the punt return, bringing out the 46, 47-yard line, and that's where the Bulldogs will take over. So no harm, no done, no harm, no foul on the interception, and uh, Landon Best will bring the offense back out. Yeah, and the thing about Trent Barraza, when you watch him run the ball, he's he's very quick. He's very you know, quick feet. He can go either way with it. But then if he wants to, he'll just run you right over. He's six foot two, 175 pounds, and he's not afraid to put the, the shoulder right into you. As I'm sure will be demonstrated many times here tonight many before times. Uh, before we're done. Best on first down, fakes the pitch, going long again, and flags come out all over as there was a friendly little shove, we'll say, on Zach Reynolds as uh, number 10 for Kerry, Trip Phoenix. Not a trip, more of a push on that play. <laughs> and that's going to give a uh, the Bulldogs an automatic Dale's Concrete first down. Just a little howling duty there, you know. Yeah. But you know, it's interesting, the game plan the club scrubs had so far now is basically throw the ball. And you know, this is normally a running team as well, but they know what they're up against up front when it comes to this carry defense, and mm -hmm. they're just gonna go over the top with them. And, you know, that's an interesting thing that you've also seen from Columbus Grove's offense is first down, second down, not a lot of success there. Third down and fourth down is where they They've were able to move really the ball. Well. And I'm sure that's a, that's an adjustment that Coach Andy Schaefer would like to see. And there's going to be another flag as it looked like. And they're going to signal offsides on the carry defense. So a couple guys trying to get a little bit of a head start. Trip Phoenix again looked like he was one of the guys that jumped over. So that first and ten is going to become a first and five. I wouldn't think that equates to your tackles for losses that you see in this carry defense because they get a head start. So, right. you know, that one didn't work that well. But again, Columbus Grove steadily moving forward, you know, with each play. So the ball on the 34, first and five. Here's Barraza working that far oh, side. He Gets a break, there and he is. is gone. Touchdown, Columbus Grove in Northwest Ohio. Recycling touchdown, and the Bulldogs strike first. And that's why I talk about Barraza. He's a big kid, 6'2", 175. He'll bowl you, bowl you over if he has the opportunity, but don't let him on the outside because he's got the speed. When he gets around that corner, he's going to outrun you. And that's what he did right there for a 33-yard touchdown run. 33 yards to the house for Trenton Barraza, his 16th rushing touchdown of the season. And Columbus Grove up 6-0 with a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken extra point up, and it is good. 5.31 remaining in the first quarter. Columbus Grove strikes first. They lead 7-0. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And tonight's instant replay sponsor is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Olds. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. 33-yard touchdown run for Trenton Barraza, giving Columbus Grove a 7-0 lead here over halfway in the first quarter of this regional semifinal on WOSN. And that run by Barraza was really set up by the passing game of Columbus Grove. Some of their passes worked, some of them didn't work. One of them was picked off, but but they're keeping the linebacking core of this Claret Carey team honest and the defensive backs honest as well. So Carey fields this. Rodman gets it at the 15 and gets a seam. Has some space across the 50 and pushed out of bounds at the 41-yard line. So Carey with a nice response. They're going to get the ball to start in plus territory for this next drive. 
Yeah, good run down that sideline there by him. You know, it you know, shows the speed that this carry team has as well. Great field position to start off your drive on. Yeah, without a doubt. Best field position start. I mean, I know we're really early into it. This is only Kerry's second drive, but that's something to be said for, you know, starting your drive on the opponent's 40. That's exactly what the Blue Devils have right now. Well, backfield, high snap, and Smiley's going to keep this one across the 38 to the 37-yard line before he's brought down. Pick up a three on that play. Yes, yeah, Zach Reynolds, unknown tackle for Columbus Grove. So that'll put the tip of the ball just on the 37-yard line. I mean, Smiley's ran for 649 yards this season. Not sure that was quite the play he expected there because it looked like a little broken play for him. But, you know, he can run the football. He's carried 86 times this year. So, you know, he's another threat in that backfield for him. There's a pitch going out, Connor Norton, and not getting anywhere to the line of scrimmage. And that is it as they host a Bulldog swallow him up. You know, the Cary Blue Devils offense has been uh, primarily on the ground that we've alluded to. Uh, they've rushed for over 3,000 yards as a collective unit this year. And that's not something you're going to find very often no, in the state of Ohio. No, you're absolutely not. And, you know, I think they're a little surprised the fact that this Columbus Grove defensive front has been able to match them one on one right at the moment, you know, and, and kind of stop these guys. You know, they're used to getting around and hitting those holes and getting through there. Third down and seven. Snap. Smiley, back to pass, is flushed out and is going to run, and he has nowhere to go as he is stopped and brought down Kyle Lathrop for Columbus Grove for the sack, and it's going to be fourth down. Sack number eight for Kyle Lathrop this season. So the uh, young man, 73 tackles this season, seven solo tackles, a tackle for a loss, and now eight sacks for that young man. So interesting to see what Kerry decides to do here is it looks like they might be going for it. Maybe a play to try and draw Columbus Grove offside, see if they can make that fourth and eight a fourth and three. They will snap it. Smiley going to keep it on fourth down and nowhere to go. Turnover on downs and the Bulldogs get the ball back. Interesting play call there. I, I'll tell you, Patrick, I, that wouldn't surprise me a little bit, just having their quarterback just take it himself because there really was no hole on that side over there at all. Yeah, it was almost a carbon copy of the play from the right that they did before, and it was also a carbon copy of how successful it was. No gain on that play, and they give the football back to Columbus Grove, who will take it on their own 38-yard line. Now we've seen what Clinton Grove's done so far on their in their series. Let's see if they keep to that same game plan and go to the air on the first and first and second down like they have been. Best hands to Barraza and picks up about two yards on first down. And you're right, if you're just tuning in, you might be surprised to hear that actually the air attack for Columbus Grove has had uh, a little bit more success as far as moving the ball down the field. Of course, Barraza running for a 33-yard touchdown, but their, their, their passing game has been how they've been able to move the ball down the field and sustain drives. And even though they had an interception, you know, on one of those passes, you know, they, they've still have been fearless as far as throwing the ball on third, fourth down, that type of thing. Best. Looking, there there again, and has a man, Zach Reynolds, to the 19-yard line for a Dale's Concrete first down. Pitch and catch by Columbus Grove tonight, best to Reynolds. And Reynolds just got by the two defenders and just got himself in the opening, and that was a perfect throw right over his shoulder, you know, while he was in full stride. And Landon Best is only a sophomore, you know, six foot, 145 pounds, but he's hit 68% of his passes this season for over 1,300 yards. So it's not like they don't have a passing game, and they've mm -hmm. shown it tonight that they definitely do have that game, passing game tonight. 19 touchdowns and three interceptions. As this is best, going to keep it. Spin move down to the 10-yard line, and that's it. Connor with the tackle. 
And if they can continue this the way they have, in the, you know, as far as the passing game goes, it's going to be, a, you know, a big detriment for uh, Kerry because they they play off of their defensive front, you know, being the guys that get in there and stop the you know, the running game. But if you're going to pull up there like that, and their best is going to go over the top of you. Best scrambling, going to tuck and run, hit at the five yard line before he is brought down. Third down coming up, tackle made by Landon Terrace, number 13 for Carey. You gotta keep an eye on Best when he, got, he tucks the ball in because he does have 13 touchdowns on the ground as well, mm -hmm. so. 552 yards. And he's gonna take it in for a Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown. I think that was landing best. So Columbus Grove and flag flags coming out Whoa. at the end of the play. So there was a, some commotion going on. The, the the points will stay on the board. At least that's what it looks like to us. And when there's a collection of young men and then flags come out from the middle of them, it usually suggests some type of unsportsmanlike conduct. The Grove fans are reacting negatively. So it sounds like it might be against the Bulldogs. The officials are talking about it at the four yard line as we wait to hear what is going on and what we believe is the culmination of a 62 yard drive for Columbus Grove with a touchdown. No signal yet so far. And there's there, there's been a couple of uh, discussions here. So let's take a look at it. One official we're talking to uh, Andy Schaefer for Columbus Grove. So personal fouls against Kerry and Columbus Grove, so the penalty's offset. And they said timeout called by Carey. Yeah, nobody saw it. The didn't see it and what it looks like to us is that that wipes out the touchdown. It, it does wipe out the touchdown. <laughs> so I think they're so what they're saying is that Carey called a touchdown before the play. Yeah, they, that's what that's why they, they're wiping off the the score. Yeah. So so Carey got a touchdown in before the play happened. So no touchdown yet for Columbus Grove. So the Bulldogs still have the football and an opportunity. Wow. Well, okay. So we've got third and three. Bulldogs try to get a first down and maybe more on this play. And Barraza back there receiving the snap. Direct snap right to him. He goes right up the middle once again. Yep. And he's got a Northwest Ohio Recycling touchdown. It worked once, we'll do it again. No flags, no timeout. So yeah, six points. I said, okay, fine. I'll just do the same thing over again. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Looks like it worked. Columbus Grove up 13-0 with the Lee's famous recipe chicken extra point forthcoming. Kick is up and it is good. 101 left in the first quarter of action in Columbus Grove with a 14 nothing lead over the Cary Blue Devils. This is high school playoff football action on WOSN. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora. Pay a top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Touchdown by Columbus Grove. Trenton Barasa with his second touchdown of the night, making it a 14 to nothing lead for Columbus Grove, culminating a 62-yard drive with seven points. And what an impressive drive it was, too. I mean, great job by Landon Best leading, you know, the general out there for his Clumps Grove team, and he definitely took him down the field. So a squib kick, fielded a 26-yard line and taken out 
to the 39-yard line. That's where the Blue Devils will take over on this next drive. And Carey looking for well, some positive things to happen here on this next drive. Well, this is a Carey team that has a, a really good offense. You know, they're averaging roughly around 40-some points a game. So, you know, they can put points on the board. They, you know, they also have a great defense and only allow them just under 12 points a game. But, you know, the biggest thing is, is most of those points come on the ground. And if you're behind, you know, you can't spend a lot of time running the ball. Smiley, back to pass on first down. He cranks this one up in the air and almost intercepted as number 23 for Kerry, Dominic Yeter, had to play defense on that play to keep the uh, ball from being picked off by, I think it was Zach Reynolds who was Zach in there. Reynolds, yeah. And that'll be second down. And you know, that's what you run into as you alluded to, when you're down and you're a running team, you have to try and do things that maybe you're not comfortable with. And I'm not saying that Carter Smiley is uncomfortable throwing the football. He's had 105 attempts heading into this game, but it's not part of your offense, generally speaking. Yeah, and, I, and we're not sure of those 105, how many of them have been deep passes like that one right there. You know? Right. Uh, that one kind of floated out there, and the defensive back had a good opportunity to pick it off. Steen across the 40 to the 41. That'll bring up a third down and long. And we really haven't heard him call, you know, we haven't called Steen's name that much. You know, I think that's only the second time he's carried the ball, which is kind of surprising when you got a guy back there at 240 pounds that's your sophomore big running back. And Kerry, for this being their, I think their third drive, they haven't really had the ball very much. I think they have one first down. Uh, their drives have been three and out, and in the case of the other one was a turnover on downs. So I guess it was four and out. Um, so. Blue Devils still looking for some continuity and some rhythm on offense. We'll see if they can have it here in this last play of the first quarter. Smiley flushed out, having to throw it, and does. Has a man open and complete at the 19-yard line and brought down at the 11. What a pitch and catch there as number 10, Trip Phoenix, coming up with the football, and that will end this first quarter. Wow. 12 minutes in the books on this one. It's a 14-0 Columbus Grove lead, but Carey looking to score as we bring you the second quarter coming up on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Second quarter action from Foss Soria Memorial Stadium here on WOSN. Semi-final action, Columbus Grove with a 14-0 lead over the Cary Blue Devils, but Cary with a big play to end the first quarter. Long pass play complete to Trip Phoenix. He's a freshman and Cary in business here early in the second quarter to get started. And only his eighth catch of the season, too. Snap. And there's handoff. Steen barreling over defenders. And that sounds like something he's very comfortable with. He gets yeah, almost I, to the five yard line. Yeah, he's not afraid to put his shoulder down right into you, boy. And he just, you know, at 240 pounds, he's a pretty, pretty good sized kid out there. And he's just going to barrel right through there. But, you know, that was a big play you know, by Carter Smiley to uh, Trip Phoenix. But really what happened was a little breakdown in communication between the two defensive backs back here for Columbus Grove that allowed you know, you know, Phoenix to get past them and open in the open field. High formation here on second down and seven. And handoff going up the middle. Out across the five to the three-yard line, and that's it. And that was Nathan Broadman on the carry. Running into big number 71 for Columbus Grove, Ethan Johnson, a six foot five, 330 pound senior, anchoring that Columbus Grove line. As you mentioned, there's a lot of big tough kids for Carey running that football. Broadman, 6'4", 225. Steen, 6'2", 240. Alex Putnam, 6'2", 200. And here is Broadman trying to get there, but the Columbus Grove defense Stiffening up, and that will bring up fourth down. Wow. Running the same play twice in a row, going to that, you know, trying to attack that left side of the Columbus Grove defense. And I'm not sure I'd go that direction. There's some pretty good-sized Columbus Grove boys yeah. standing over there. 
Yeah, I don't know that I would. I, I don't know that I would run the same play over again no. if it didn't work that well, or it wasn't at least getting you the yardage that you wanted. So fourth and one. So this is going to be old-fashioned hat on a hat football and see who prevails. Smiley under center in the power eye. Here is fourth down, and Smiley is going to keep it and gets in for the Northwest Ohio Recycling touchdown. Nice fake. They thought it was going to be a, just a hard run up the middle, and Smiley swings it out to the left side and puts six on the board. Yeah, in the area that they nearly need to go. They tried the run. You know, going on the right side of their offensive line, hitting that left side of that Columbus Grove defense. This time they swung around to the other way, and that's really what they needed to do to get away from, you know, the big guys up front for Columbus Grove. Good call by Kerry head coach John Mershman. And now the Lee's extra point forthcoming. Kick is up with some pressure, and it is good. Just underway here in the second quarter, 9.55 remaining. It's now a 14-7 lead for the Grove Bulldogs. This is high school football action on WOSN. Welcome back. Our extra point and field goal sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous First Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. And our first down sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Carry with a much needed touchdown drive. They cut into the lead 14 to seven on Columbus Grove. And it'll be a short kick fielded by Kyle Hopkins around the 30 yard line. And he'll take it out to the 37 yard line. And that is where the Bulldogs will take over on their next drive. Their first one of the second quarter. Yeah, Club Grove, Columbus Grove, this is the second time that they played at Fostoria Memorial Field. They're 0-1 they're in playoff action here. You know, their last game, their only loss they had was a 42-20 loss to Hoopa Loudon in 2006. So it's been a while since they've been here on this field. You know, beautiful stadium, though. You know, very well put together. Uh, pretty much downtown Fostoria over mm -hmm. to your left side. It's certainly a nice place to take in a football game. And this is Barraza on first down. Oh, Has some space bye. down the sideline. Makes a guy miss. Cuts back inside to the 10, to the 5, to the touchdown. A Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown, 63 yards for Trenton Barraza. My goodness. And you just saw Barraza at his best right there. You know, you saw his speed when he got to the outside, down that sideline. Then you saw him make two guys miss badly and then just cut right between two defenders into the end zone. You know, he's just a great running back for this guy. He's only a junior, too, so this young man's going to be back again next year for this Columbus Grove team. Barraza with his third touchdown and the Lee's famous recipe extra point is good. Just like that, it took 15 seconds for Columbus Grove to answer 21 to seven Bulldogs here on WOSN. Welcome back, 21 to seven Columbus Grove. If you stepped away to grab a drink or a snack or something, you missed this quick touchdown, 63 yards by Trent Barraza, you know that big block that he got on that near side, that left side of the line is really what cleared him open for that touchdown. And then the rest of it was just Barraza. Yeah, big big block out there by Brady Basinger, just laying the guy out and that, you know, sprung Barraza loose. And then from that point on, it was all Trent Barraza down that sideline. And boy, he's got some speed, you know, for a big kid. And, you know, and the moves to, to get between two defenders down there too. So structure instant replay. Thank them for that. And here on the return and going nowhere as Phoenix tripped up at the seven yard line by Columbus Grove. So it's going to be a long field coming up for the Blue Devils. Yeah, I think that was Trayvon Baxter back there, the sophomore for Columbus Grove, just laid him out back there. You know, tough, tough field position for Kerry to start out this drive, especially after a 63 yard touchdown run. You know, put you in a whole a bigger hole. Now you got to start off deep in your own territory. 21 to seven on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Columbus Grove with a two touchdown lead. And let's see how Kerry can answer that last touchdown. Smiley rolling to his left in trouble and brought down for the sack 
Loss of five around the 10 yard line is Columbus Grove. We talked about Kerry getting the tackles for losses. Well, I'll tell you what, Loudon Akmudi has a few tackles uh, uh, for loss of his own. Yeah. Yeah, he's the leading guy out there for uh, Columbus Grove on defense. Their, he's their leading tackler, 114 tackles, 18 solos, 10 tackles for losses. He also has an interception as well. You know, but great job by the defensive backs of Columbus Grove on the receivers to, to force Carter Smiley to have to keep the ball. It's always tough for a right-handed quarterback to roll to your left and be able to do anything. And nothing doing here on second down is the high snap maybe threw off some timing and just nowhere to go is getting in on that. Connor Douglas, the 6'5", 275-pound senior for the sack. Wow. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd want to have the ball when that guy's down right there. So two straight plays go backwards for Carey, and that'll make it third down and 14 for the Blue Devils. This Bulldog defense is feeling it right now, too. All the momentum's on their side of the ball, and they know it. Smiley's going to take it and run on third down with a little bit of space and is going to dive toward the stick, but I don't think he's going to have enough for the first down. Looks like he's going to be about two yards short, and I I would well I would I would punt it if I were uh, John Mershman, but we'll see what they decide to do here, and maybe uh, I don't know. Dart looks like they might be going for it here. Well, when you got you know those big running backs that they've got back here, you know, plus Smiley can carry the ball as well, so. Yeah, they got a lot of confidence in their running backs. High formation, fourth and one. They are going for it. There's the handoff. It's Nathan Broadman's spin, spin move and gets just enough for the Dales Concrete first down. You know, like I said, Patrick, when you got guys out there 225, 240 in your backfield and a quarterback that can run the ball too, I mean, you you know, if you've, you've flown the entire season relying on your rushing game. And if you've got you know, a fourth and, and two yards to go, you've got to have confidence that you're going to be able to pick that up. That's what you built your whole entire program on. And if you've got guys that are that good and that big and you think, hey, in a fourth down situation in a yard, if we can't get that, yep. we're, we're probably not going to win this game anyway. Smiley on first down, flush out of the pocket, hit as he threw. Throws this one up and cut at the 41-yard line. What a catch by Carey. Trip Phoenix having a big game already. Yeah, that's a that huge play to Dale's concrete first down. Go ahead, Dark. That's that freshman out there for Carey. But I'll tell you what, again, he just lofted that ball up. And somehow, it's like a Hail Mary every time he throws the ball. Yeah. But, but somehow, it came down into Phoenix's hands. Here you see the structure instant replay. He was surrounded by Bulldogs. And yet, somehow, the 5'9 uh, freshman comes up with it. Now to the power eye on first down. And it's Nathan Broadman going right up the middle for another Dale's Concrete first down. And you see him kind of pound his fist in the ground as he's starting to feel a little bit, maybe get a little momentum going the Blue Devils way now. Yeah, he thought he, he thought he was able to break, gonna break that for the touchdown. And he was really disappointed. In fact, he didn't. But, you know, again, you know, this running game started to pick it up. And, you know, that long pass by Smiley just set this up again. I think that's two complete passes for Smiley, and they've both been to Phoenix. And now here's Norton on first down, and he gets out to the eight-yard line. Picks up about eight on that carry. It'll be second down. He looked across the board. I mean, tell you what, with Connor Norton, out there, you know, it's 307 yards coming into this game, carrying it. You know, then you throw in Steen and you throw in Broadman. You know, there's some boys back there in that backfield for carry that can really carry the ball. This is Broadman once again is carry using that power eye. And I, I tell you what, on these last couple of drives, that's going to be Dale Concrete first down. So first and goal coming up for the Blue Devils. That power eye formation. Uh, and I'm sure this has worked for them all season. We haven't seen a lot of carry in action here on WOSN, but it's, it looks like something that has worked out pretty well for them so far this year. Yeah, and when you got a big front line like that at 255, 290, and 262, and 220, I mean, you're, you're counting on your linemen to open the holes for you. 
Smiley keeping this one going to that left side and is in for the Northwest Ohio Recycling touchdown. So Carey responds with a 91 yard drive to put six more points on the board. Boy, and this is something you didn't really expect. I mean, you've got a Columbus Grove defense coming in average and giving up only 13 points a game. You got a carry defense coming in and giving up just about 12 points a game. And now you're at 21 13 already here in the first half. So here's the Lee's famous recipe chicken extra point. And that kick is through the uprights. 549 remaining in the first half. It's a 21 14 lead for Columbus Grove. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. remaining in the second quarter. Carey putting seven more points on the board, leading 21 to 14, and uh, a familiar recipe for how they scored on their previous drive, a, uh, a long pass complete to Trip Phoenix, and then the rushing attack does the rest. Yeah, and, and it's really remarkable because these passes by Carter Smiley, you know, are launched. I mean, they're not really passes, they're just launched up in the air, and then you leave it up to your, your receivers to pull it down, and that's what he's been able to do. And, you know, then once they get down in, in kind of good territory, you know. Onside kick, and it was fielded, and nowhere to advance it. There's Brady Basinger. So first and 10 for the Bulldogs, and I thought, I think they backed him up a couple of yards. I thought they are gonna start in plus territory. They're gonna start on the 50. Really a smart move by uh, John Mersman, you know, and his coaching staff to try it on so I kick your minute. You've now got the momentum on your side of the ball, and this is playoff football. You know, you, you're going to try everything. Yeah, there's there is no tomorrow for whoever loses this one. And Basinger, oh, nice now he's grab. able to advance it with the completion and a nice pickup of 15 and a Dale's concrete first down. Nice catch by Basinger, pulling that one right out of the air. And that's another freshman out there, too. Mm -hmm. So between Phoenix and, and Basinger, you got the freshman core out there doing a good job of catching the football. That's his 16th catch you know, of the season. Class of 27 being represented quite well tonight. Here's Barraza. And the class of 25 looking pretty good out across the 32 yard line. You know, Alex Butman in there on the tackle again, the big, you know, outside linebacker for uh, Carey. Second and seven on the just Knows the ball on the 33 yard line. Second down and seven coming up for the Bulldogs. Best in the backfield. Swings that one out to Reynolds. Complete the 30, breaks a tackle, and that is where he will be stopped after another Blue Devil assist in there. And that'll bring up third down coming up. So Phoenix and I think Jamison Raider uh, might fit in there on the stop for Carey. Good pass play out to the outside like that. Got him a few yards. Connor Norton, my fault. Connor Norton was in there on the stop as well for the Blue Devils. Now third and four, and it's going to be a Dale's Concrete first down with the off signs against Carey. I think it might have been on Nathan, Nathan Broadman out there. So second offsides call, I believe, on the night against the Carey defense. And that's going to give an automatic Dale's Concrete first down to the Bulldogs. Certainly not something that Carey needs to be giving free yardage away to Columbus Grove, especially on third downs. No, not when you feel like you've got them on their heels, you know, and, you, and you've got the rhythm now on your side of the ball. And off to Barraza on first down, slipped a tackle and is hit again at the 19 yard line. Good for a six yard pickup. Boy, he's quick hit in the hole, isn't he? Yes, he is. I mean, goodness. You know, he, he runs those off tackles so well. And just, you know, as soon as he sees an opening, he's through it. 
Seems like he's faster. You and I called their game against Allen East here earlier in the season, and Barraza, I mean, he looked good, obviously, and Columbus Grove with a convincing win against the Mustangs, but he just looks faster tonight. That swing pass out to Kyle Hopkins, gets out to the 12-yard line, and that'll be another Dales Concrete first down. Yeah, I think you're right, Patrick, because, you know, in the Allen East game, he was more bowling over people, you know, most of the game. I mean, he just, mm -hmm. and it was a steady build up his yardage, you know, it really didn't, you know, get in big chunks. He just kept, you know, getting the ball and just keep, you know, getting four, five yards, of the, you know, every yeah. time he carried the ball. Tonight, you know, he's broke off some, some nice runs that, you know, and showed that speed. Now first and 10, here's Barraza once again, working that left side across the 10 before he is brought down as that's Dwayne Gibson in there on the stop. Yeah, they're trying to exploit that uh, right side of the uh, carry defense out there. So obviously the Columbus Girls coaching staff has seen something they like because most of the runs that they've had for Barraza have gone to that side. Yeah, there's something about that particular matchup that they like because they have gone there. Now trips right for Best as he looks to the sideline on second down and eight. And we're going to have a Metzger Financial Services timeout as the Blue Devils want to talk this one over. We'll take the timeout as well. 2.26 remaining in the first half. It's a 21 to 14 lead for Columbus Grove. You're watching high school football action on WOSN. Welcome back. 226 left in the first half. Columbus Grove on the carry 10 yard line on a second down and eight. Looking for touchdown number four on the day. Here is Barraza on second down across the 10 to the nine. And that's about it. Dash Puckett, the 5'10 sophomore in on the stop for the Blue Devils and it's third down. Yeah, I don't think that play is gonna fool anybody on the carry side because you know they've tried that play now two or three times. and. You know, they got one touchdown that wasn't a touchdown, then they got another touchdown that was a touchdown, you know, on that particular play. But uh, I don't think that, you know, they're going to be fooled if Braz is back here in the backfield by himself. Best by himself here on third and seven. Barraza in motion. Now best in motion, and this play is whistled dead. A flag comes out, and we're going to have a false start called against the Bulldogs. So it looks like someone got a head start for Columbus Grove. So that'll make it a third and 12 now. They gotta be careful not to get themselves out of field goal area as well. I mean, Virhoff, like I said, has tried four field goals this season. He hit two of them. So you wanna keep yourself at least have a, an opportunity for him to try one if you don't get that first down or touchdown. Devin Verhoff has been Warming up on the sideline. Best back to throw screen oh and my. intercepted at the 21 yard line as Alex Putnam using all of that 6 4 frame and gets the second interception of the night for the Blue Devils. Wow. I tell you what, you got to get that up over the top of that young man. You know, he's your outside linebacker and he is all 6 4. He really didn't have to jump that high to get that one, so that pass really just barely cleared, you know, to where he could pick it off. You see that on the structure instant replay, and it's one of those where, yeah, if you don't get that ball up high enough, and you got a guy that's that's tall, and as you said, Putnam yeah. didn't even have to jump that high, able to snag that one out, and Carey able to get another defensive stop, and now we'll see what the Blue Devils can do on first down. Smiley going long again and incomplete as the guy that was closest to it was Columbus Grove. Grant Eversole was the guy that had a chance at picking that one off. And Grant Eversole going back here like an outfielder going turning left and turning right and trying to figure out where the ball is. But again, boy, another Hail Mary type pass by Carter Smiley down the field. Well, the last couple of those he threw, he, I mean, <laughs> Trip, Trip, Phoenix, Trip Phoenix was there to, to bring it in. Back in the eye, second down and 10. Smiley rolling out to his left in trouble and brought down Kyle Lathrop. Guess who? Sack number nine on the season. 
the big defensive end for Columbus Grove just comes in there and just wrestles him down. Metzger Financial Services timeout. So I didn't see who take the timeout, but we will take the timeout. 121 remaining here in the first half. We'll be back here on WOSN. 144 remaining here in the first half. A 21-14 lead for Columbus Grove. Gary taking the timeout, but they are facing a very long third down and 18. Columbus Grove taking that last Metzger Financial Services timeout. And of course, uh, I would imagine Andy Schaefer looking an opportunity to get the football back with time here in the first half to do something, maybe put another score on the board. Yeah, hoping to get the ball back. And not only get the ball back, but get in from pretty decent field position again. Third and 18, Smiley is going to keep it. Gets across the 30, or close to the 30, and he gets a couple yards back, but not nearly enough for a fourth down and a punt on the way as Columbus Grove uses their final timeout of the half with 118 remaining in it. So the punt unit coming out, and of course, uh, there is no admission fee to watch this game if you're sitting at home checking it out, but there is a cost for us to broadcast it. You can say thanks to viewer-supported TV44 by sending a financial gift. We rely on the donations of viewers just like you to enable airing this game and other locally produced programs. You can donate now if you go to axeministries.com and donate. We can continue to bring you great action like this one. This one of many games on the WTLW WOSN slate this weekend is its regional semifinal weekend. And that much closer to state championships. And of course, we've got a lot of teams in the local area that are uh, legitimate state champion contenders, I think, this year. Yeah, when you get into the, particularly in Division 7, they're going to, you know, and six and seven and stuff, you're going to get a lot of local talent around here that's going to be playing. Yeah. So the last few years, we've had at least three teams competing for state titles. Columbus Grove could be one of them as well. Punt is blocked and corralled. And I don't know how many, if it touched a bulldog. And Carey got it back, so wow. a tipped punt. Columbus Grove touches the ball. Carey recovers that, so. Uh, the officials are talking about it, so we'll, we'll hold on to see exactly what we got here. They're gonna stick with Carey. It's gonna be Blue Devil football. My goodness. So we take a look at that on the structure incident replay, and it looks like, you know, from what we can tell that it is, it was blocked, and then Columbus Grove I, I can't really see what it was. Tried to field it, I think. And then if you touch it and you don't corral it, I mean, it's a live ball. It's a live ball. That's Carey true. jumped right back on top of it. Well, well now, now they're discussing this again. And they're saying, hold on a second. Half of Columbus Grove's co coaching staff is out on the field. Because this is, I mean, this is... Uh, more unique than you would think. Yeah, it is. And this is very important with minute 12 left is who's going to get this ball. Because if it's Groves football, I mean, it's very close. Then they might be discussing, because if Grove tipped it, mm -hmm then it would be Grove football, regardless of what happens, because it's already been touched by Columbus Grove, if I'm understanding the rules correctly. Let's hope they're understanding the rules Yeah, correctly. as long as they get it, it really doesn't matter what we think. <laughs> Andy Schaefer you know, keeps taking a step closer to the officials. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like it is going to be carry football. I don't know about this one, Dar. Well, you can't start this play. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hold, yeah, hold on just a, a second. Coach, you're, Andy, you're missing one official. <laughs> Co Coach Schaefer is uh, is not coming off the field, and, and I feel like he may have a legitimate beef here. Yeah, 
So, yeah, a very interesting development here as the ball was tipped. The punt, the, the punt was blocked, excuse me. The punt was tipped. And then it shouldn't matter. No. Like, it shouldn't matter at that point. Whether Carrier Columbus Grove touches it, the ball is just dead where it is, where it lands. And it should be Columbus Grove football. Yeah, and I think Andy Schaefer is probably down there asking why that is not the case. Yeah, I'm surprised somebody and, hasn't pulled a rule book out yet. Well, and I'm I'm kind of interested to see what the conversation is about down there, how the how the officials are explaining this, because perhaps. So the officials are going to continue to talk this over. Now, it's possible that the officials didn't see the punt get tipped. Right. Maybe that was just a right. bad punt. And if they're operating under the assumption that the punt was not blocked and tipped at all, then this would be Kerry football if Kerry recovered what would have been a Columbus Grove Absolutely. fumble. Absolutely. So whether they and, saw the ball being tipped is what's important. Go ahead, Dark. Yeah, and you're right, Patrick. I mean, it, it all comes down to what did they see out there, you know, on in, in this particular play. And obviously you've got three or four guys you know, Different referees. Now he's bringing the rules there's out. a guy bringing out the suitcase. Is this <laughs> yeah. a money in the bank match that's coming up? What is <laughs> there's a rule. So book. there's the rule book. They're bringing. Yeah, the, we're going to keep this right here. We're going to we're going to hang on to this because this is stuff you do not see every day in high school football. I'm surprised it's the other official bringing out the rule book. I thought one of these guys on the side right over here would have <laughs> six or seven of them going, hey. There yeah. are uh, there are college football fans and NFL football fans that are like, you know, I wish this would happen more often. Yes, I wish these absolutely. guys would pull out the rule book the and rule know book. what's going on. Instead of deferring to the guys up in the booth somewhere, you know, in New York or wherever they're at. You know, I, I would... I would really credit the PA announcer here at Faustoria Memorial Stadium if they had the, you remember the who wants to be a millionaire like yeah. music while they're mm. thinking of something? Uh, cranking that through as they're trying to figure this out. As long as they don't crank out the Twilight Zone theme, I'll be fine. <laughs> you know, because right now it's a little bit of that. You know. you know, Some of the Columbus Grove fans might be thinking they're in the Twilight Zone right now yeah. looking at this and going, wait, this is our ball, obviously. Wow. So they're discussing this. You know, we'll step away. We'll take a quick timeout and we'll come back. 21-14, Columbus Grove. I tell you what, no, we'll, we'll keep it here. We'll keep it here and see what they come up with. So they're going to Andy Schaefer with the rule book. I, I'll tell you what. I, I don't think that's going to make a difference I, to Andy Schaefer, but I've been I've been covering high school sports for you know close to 20 years, and this is a first. This, yeah. I mean, we're in the regional semifinals, you know, and, and you got to bring out the rule book. I mean, so they're explaining it to. They did explain it to Andy Schaefer, and I, I don't know if it was satisfactory, but Kerry is going to maintain possession. But now you got to be alert for Carl and Carter Smiley to throw one of those launches downfield again, you know, with a minute 12 left. Yeah, so there was also a penalty on Columbus Grove. A delay game. <laughs> okay. That's a little added insult to injury. <laughs> right, area. yeah. All right, so here we go, back to football action, and nope, no, nope, we're going to have another timeout. So the clock may not be correct. Well, at least they haven't got to the point where they just pack it up and let's go into the locker room. I'll tell you, yeah. Half. It's like, let's, uh, I don't know, sometimes let's just take a knee and go into halftime before a meteor hits or something. Yeah, it's really. So they've, officials timeout. Now there's official talking again to Andy Schaefer. I tell you folks, you're not going to get this coverage anywhere else, only WOSN. Yeah. Well, we, now, well, now Andy's telling me, you know, hey, get your flags, your uh, sticks right too, because they ain't right either. Oh, my goodness. All right. So the penalty was assessed. Instead of it being first and ten, moving the sticks, it's first and five from the penalty. 112 remaining in the first half. 
Here we go, Carey with the football. And the pitch out, going to Niedercore. Working that side, and yeah, it's gonna have the Dales concrete first down out to the 45 yard line. That play only took seven seconds off the clock. So. And the clock will stop while the flag is set and the clock will start again. We understand that much from the rule book at least. Yeah. Now Smiley and Another flags flag. coming out on this one. And it's gonna be a false start against the Blue Devils. You know, every once in a while, my mom's, or my, my mom, well, my mom probably says it too, but my wife will say, hey, uh, you know, the last two minutes of a football game always take like 10 minutes to play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is, this is uh, fodder for that argument. Yeah. My wife's the same way. I'll say, well, there's only a couple minutes left. Yeah, big deal. <laughs> right. <laughs> First and 15, Smiley, flushed out of the pocket, being chased by Lathrop, is going to tuck and run and gets to the 49-yard line. Before he runs out of bounds, stopping the clock with 43 seconds left. Pick up a five. And if you were watching close on that play there, Smiley's running for his life along that one sideline. And who's right in hot pursuit is number 76, Connor Douglas, 275-pound, you know, defensive tackle when he was chasing him down too. So give him credit for three yards, second down and seven. Uh, defensive back's got to be alert for this one here. We've seen what Smiley's done on this before. Indeed, here's Smiley. And running, it is Cook and Wong, and just missing it. Was looking for Niedercore on that play. Smiley was really close to the line of scrimmage when he threw that ball, but it was it was a legal forward pass. Niedercore incomplete, third and eight. Pretty decent pass, I mean, a little high, but a little decent pass when you're running forward like that, having to throw in the run, and he's still able to get it close to Niedercore back here. This is a huge third down play here for both teams. Shotgun set on third and eight. Smiley back to pass, lets this one go, and that is gonna be intercepted at the 23 yard line by Columbus Grove with blockers down the sideline and is pushed out of bounds. And that is, that's it, that's number nine for Columbus Grove. So Baxter coming up with the interception, a nice return and with 22 seconds left. I mean, based on the kerfuffle from here just a few minutes ago, I wouldn't be surprised to see Andy Schaefer take a shot or two. I wouldn't either. He's basically starting in the same place he was earlier on before right, all this started. Right. He's just down to 22 seconds to do it, but you know, we've seen them score in 15 seconds, so. You know, if they can get back and get uh, Trenton Barraza again on the outside and follow, his, you know, get a big block on the outside again, he may be gone too. According to the scoreboard, the Bulldogs still have a timeout remaining. And I think there was a penalty assessed as well. So while we were looking around assessing the situation, the ball got moved 15 additional yards. So now to the 21 yard line. They can run one play and try, you know, try to set up for the field goal if they need to. Absolutely. I mean, time to take a couple shots here if they want to. Here's Best looking. Takes off running to the 16 yard line and then he is pushed out of bounds. So he picks up about five or six yards on that play, 14 seconds left. And if D, they do have one timeout left, he can you know run off a couple of plays. Maybe one play in the field bullets have to come in here. You see uh, warming up down on the sideline again. He said he has tried four field goals and hit two of them this season, so it's not new territory for that young man. Certainly not. That option is out there. Here's Barraza on second down, oh, look working around that right side oh, to the 10, goodness. to the nine yard line of Dale's concrete first down. So the clock will stop. Nine seconds remaining, Grove getting set up as the clock will start again and they will spike the football. Columbus Grove 
So nine seconds left. Opportunity for one, maybe two shots at the end zone, depending on how you do it. Yeah, you got to be real careful about what play you run because, you know, you don't want to get yourself caught inside, you know, and, and not out of bounds. It's obvious that, you know, touchdown is foremost in your mind at this stage. So they wound the clock. Three seconds now. So the officials are signaling to the press box here to put six seconds on the clock. They put 60 on, they're working it out. They got six seconds on there. It's like Columbus Grove would probably take 60 seconds. No, I mean, maybe not. Yeah, That'd give maybe. Kerry an opportunity to do something. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're a Columbus Grove fan, maybe you're thinking Kerry's had enough breaks tonight. So Verhoff is going to come on for a 25 yard field goal. And the Lee's famous person, Pichekin, field goal is up and good. 24 to 14, four seconds left in the first half. This is high school football action on WOSN. Four seconds remaining, Columbus Grove putting up a 25 yard uh, Evan Verhoff field goal. 24 to 14, the Bulldogs and what has been a, well, what will be a much talked about uh, end of the first half, certainly uh, around Columbus Grove water coolers on Saturday. But that was the longest one minute, 12 seconds I've ever lived. And in football, that's saying something. Quick, or short kick, kick is fielded at the 32 yard line and the clock is... And the clock never moved. Clock, yeah, clock never moved. <laughs> Stayed at four seconds. Please, if, if for no other reason than Andy Schaefer's blood pressure, just please end this half. <laughs> I think, I think they're on first name basis down there, <laughs> that referee. I, think. I just hope they're not on nickname basis. Yeah, That's really, what I'm worried about. That point. My goodness. So, uh, if you want to be an official, go to OHSAA.org, and there's, uh, there's training, there's classes, they are... Uh, always looking for <laughs> officials to uh, help out in all sports. That's halftime here at Fostoria Memorial Stadium. It's a 24-14 lead for Columbus Grove. Third quarter coming up when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Third quarter ready to get started here, and we are at Fostoria Memorial Stadium Regional Semifinal Action. Division 6, Region 22 is Columbus Grove with a 24 to 14 lead over the Cary Blue Devils. Patrick Hamler, Darn go here with you, and a uh, competitive first half that you know, there were a lot of big plays both ways, but uh, it's been a it's been a really competitive game. It's been a really fun game, and apart from you know the quirkiness that ended the first <laughs> half, uh, a a well played game. Yeah, it certainly has been, and you know, and it's everything that we expected to see. You know, both teams coming out there, they got some decent quarterbacks out there throwing the ball around, but it's really been Trenton Barraza for Columbus Grove here in this first half. You know, a lot of good plays by Landon Best to set him up, but. A 63-yard touchdown run by Barraza, a 33-yard touchdown run, and a three-yard touchdown run. Plus, in the field goal to end the first half, he's put Columbus Grove at this 24-14 to advantage. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how they come out here in the second half. What kind of adjustments that both teams will have to make? You know, uh, I would really expect to see Kieran go back to this bed, bread and butter, which is basically run the ball. You know, we've seen Carter Smiley throw the ball, a lot of air under the ball, you know, pretty much throwing it up there for anybody to grab. And I don't know sure I get, you know, that's going to be a good game plan for the second half here. There's a nice return by Carey as they get the football to start the third quarter down, push out of bounds at the 48 yard lines. So the Blue Devils will take over first on offense. And uh, yeah, the, the, the passing game, which is not readily apparent for the Carey Blue Devils this year, 
uh, has shown up in fits and starts tonight. It's really been a couple of long pass plays and get, getting that air under the ball, as you mentioned, Dar, is really what Smiley has done. Uh, but uh, a Blue Devil has come down at the end of it the last couple of times, and they were some long pass plays and contributed to their 14 points. But uh, you'd have to uh, think that the running game is where they want to stick with it and try and beat Columbus Grove on the ground. Here is Smiley on first down, able to keep his balance and go across the 45 to the 44. Yeah, I mean, with the big running backs that, that Kerry has and the big offensive line that they have, you think that's what they'd want to continue to do. They had a, a pass picked off by Columbus Grove late in the, in the first half. You know, like I said, you threw up a couple passes. Trip Phoenix, their freshman uh, receiver out there, was able to pull down a couple of them. But you know, you really got to, you know, stick to what you, what you do well, and that's that's run the ball. Gain of eight on that first play. So here they come on second down, and this is Eli Steen. Good for a Dale's concrete first down out to the 40-yard line. And Steen, who uh, it didn't seem like he got a lot of use in the first half. They said we called his name that many times. You have to think that getting him more involved in the game plan is going to be a big key for the Blue Devils here in the second half. Yeah, Steen is their leading rusher this season with over uh, 1,100 yards and 14 touchdowns on the ground. But you're right, Patrick. We didn't call his name that much in the first half. A lot of, uh, you know, Connor Norton, uh, Nathan Bod Broadman, and Smiley are carrying the ball. And just as ordered, here's Steen across the 30, down to the 25-yard line, gain of 12, and a Dale's concrete first down. Well, he's only a sophomore. He is uh, 240 pounds, you know, and, and, and that running from that, basically the, a fullback type position where they run that at power eye, and he really is a load out there. And once he gets into the secondary, now you're leaving it up to your defensive backs to pull him down. So Kerry advancing the ball very well on this first drive of the third quarter. High formation again on first and 10. It's gonna be a quick handoff. Nathan Broadman with the carry. And every time you see Broadman carry the ball, you just kind of see a mass of humanity just kind of go with him. And he picks up those five, six yards the hard way, and he does on that play. It's that kind of, uh, what do they call it, the tush push, where you get all your off <laughs> offensive yeah. linemen pushing you at the same time, too. Something like I mean, that. And then you see the whole mass moving one way or the other. Whatever is halfway between a rugby scrum and a and tush that's push, it. that's kind of what happens. Yeah, that's it. Nathan Brodman carries the football. Back to the I formation, second and five. Smiley under center, here's the handoff, and this time not finding a lot of space. There is Broadman to the 20, and that's about it. It's going to set up a third and a long four coming up. Yeah, good push by the defensive line by Columbus Grove to, to stop that one. They're going to need that a couple more times here. They need this a big third down play for, uh, for this Cary Blue Devil team, and if they can get a first down inside the 20-yard line, you know, that's going to be tough. So third and three is how they'll mark it. Ball just inside the 20 and a handoff up the middle. And this is Steen fighting at the 12-yard line, oh still goodness. pushing the pile forward. A Dale's concrete first down as he's inside the 10. Wow, he is so strong. They're basically saving him for the second half, it looks like. Matt very well may be. It looks like Connor Norton's going to head to the sideline and get a breather. Austin Niedercore checks in. So it's Niedercore, Steen, and Broadman. They're on first down. This time it's Steen, and Steen is going to power all the way into the end zone for Northwest Ohio Recycling touchdown. So Carey takes the ball and marches right down the field, 52 yards. And they are at least famous recipe check an extra point away from being only down a field goal. And like I said, Patrick, they stuck to what they know best. And that's run the ball. And that's, you know, they just powered their way all the way down the field. And the Lee's extra point is up and it is good. 8.38 remaining in the third quarter. Carey strikes first. In the second half, it's a 24-21 Columbus Grove lead. Bulldogs with the ball next here on WOSN.
Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Northwest Ohio Wright Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Blue Devils take the ball right down the field, 52 yards on the drive for a touchdown, and it is now 24-21. And on the kick, there was a say flag, gonna be offsides against Carey. So someone on the Blue Devils get a little bit of a head start. So I think we're gonna re-kick this one. Yeah, that drive by uh, Carey, you know, just feeding their big beast back there and Eli Steen and he, you know, like I said, we didn't call his name that much in the first half, but he certainly did on that start of that third quarter drive. and. He took it all the way down and just powered his way into the end zone. Bulldogs are going to have to come up with kind of, some kind of solution for him. Yeah, Columbus Grove has had uh, minimal problems moving the ball down the field. Their drives have been very successful, of course, holding on to a three-point lead. And uh, Columbus Grove has had their opportunities where you felt like they were going to be able to, to pull away in this one. Only a three-point lead. We'll see if Columbus Grove can do on this next drive that could possibly end up with pretty good field position. This is going to be a short kick fielded at the 25-yard line with a chance to return it. Going right up the sideline and dragged out of bounds at the 43-yard line as Zach Reynolds with a nice return. Of course, the Columbus Grove fans wanting a horse collar tackle, but I don't I think that was the case. I don't think he got in there and grabbed the pad, at least from what I could tell from this vantage point. No, I don't think he did either, but you know, it was close. But I, It was very close, yes. You're, but you're not gonna get it, probably that call over there in that sideline. I don't even know if the referee was close enough to even see it at that point, but we've had a lot of that going on in this game. <laughs> Uh, strap in, folks. This is going to be a, hey, it's gonna be a, well <laughs> a fun a final half. 20 minutes of football action. Here's Barraza. Gets the handoff on first down, and the Blue Devils are there for a loss of two. A number of guys in there on the stop. Saw Niedercore in there on the stop. Eli Steen also getting in the backfield there, second down. Yeah, there's no place to go on that side over there, even though Trenton Blas tried to make something out of that play. There wasn't anything. Quickly back, second down and 11. This time it's a pass, looking for the other side. And it's Cal Hopkins with some space across the 40 to the 38 yard line. As he picks up some of that back, it's gonna be third and five. Ooh, is that and tough we're gonna one? have a, a flag is between the 47 and the 48 yard line as it appears to be in the neighborhood of holding. We'll see what the call actually is. Looks like an illegal block in the back. So that's gonna back up Columbus Grove quite a bit. Yeah, that's a tough one after a nice completion there to get, you know, some of that yardage back again and set you up on a little, third, you know, second down short play. Now you're second 21. And now the officials are meeting at the 45, 46 yard line and Discussing, don't know. So the placement of the ball, I see. So they moved the ball about a half yard. And here we go, second and 21. We'll wind the clock. Barraza with the direct snap. He's going to take it right up the middle and breaks a couple tackles, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, which is the 43 yard line. So a third and, I'm sorry, a second and 21 turns into a third and 10. So it'll be long, but somewhat manageable. Yeah, nice run by Barraza. And, you know, that's a surprising play for Columbus Grove because, you know, Kerry knows that he's back here by himself. And you know, they know what's coming. And they just haven't been able to stop him in that many times. And you really saw some great blocking in the Columbus Grove offensive line, which has done a great job of opening holes. We saw in a couple of other Barraza's long runs that there have been some really great blocking in some spots and been able to open 
some of that stuff up. Now on third and 10, and here's Barraza once again looking for that left side, and uh, Carey seals it up. Broadman in there on the stop, and it's gonna be fourth and 12. Good pursuit, though, coming around the end there by Carey as well to chase him down. Once he was stopped dead in his tracks right there, then they had two or three guys coming around the edge. So quickly back as Columbus Grove is maybe gonna go for it. Let's we'll see if they try and get him to jump. Carey has jumped a couple of times tonight. And it's gonna be a little pooch punt. Nice as punt. the Bulldogs will play for field position and it looks like they might be able to pin him pretty deep. In fact, they're gonna pin him inside the five. Ball down at the four yard line. So somewhere Jim Tressel is smiling. <laughs> as the Bulldogs able to pin the Blue Devils inside their own five yard line. Nice job by Landon Best to put that ball down there. Man. Not just a last name, also describing his punt Absolutely. for the night. Absolutely, that was a great punt. Not the best punt we've seen this <laughs> evening. Good coverage by Columbus Grove. They were down there in a hurry too to make sure that mm -hmm. no carry guys were gonna get that ball. Now, now the, the Blue Devils, oh, go ahead, Dark. The Bulldogs are really gotta stiffen up right here. They wanna keep these guys right where they're at. Blue Devils successful on their last drive here. They go again on first down. Broadman out to the side and maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like he might have even lost a yard. Yeah, this is a key position here for both sides. Carey needs to get out of the, you know, the shadow of their end zone. And Columbus Grove says, no, we want to keep you right here. So Carey wants to prove that that last Touchdown drive wasn't really a fluke as here on third down and Broadman running hard out to the 10 yard line just across it. I'll bring up a third down in about five. I'll tell you what, Patrick, Broadman came into this game with only 16 carries on the season. You know, and, and just 70 yards of offense. And, and he's carried the ball, I don't know how many times tonight, but he seems to be their key back, you know, in that first half. You know, and, and it's gotten two or three carries here in the second half as well. They didn't use him that much all season long. They've seen a lot of work tonight, as you mentioned. Power eye up the middle here on third down. Still pushing the ball as Broadman out across the 20 yard line. Good for a Dale's concrete first down is those are the kind of runs that they get you yardage now and they're going to get you yardage later too. They certainly will. And like I said, you know, they, you know, they relied on steam most of the season and now Broadman on this particular, I don't know if it was something they saw with the Columbus Grove defense. They thought they could exploit him a little bit more with Broadman and they couldn't with steam, but you know, we saw steam just got him pile driving his way down for a touchdown earlier on. So. Fresh set of sticks. This is Steen. Uh, take that court, Connor Norton to the 25. Yeah, that's a real luxury when you've got three guys in the backfield that can carry the ball and your quarterback, too. Yeah. I mean, Smiley's. Carried, Putnam's carried, Nordham, Niedercore, Steen, Broadman, all these guys are very capable running backs. And you see Broadman just churning those legs, getting out to the 30 yard line. Nothing fancy. I mean, just, you know, take it off tackle, just keep powering your way through. Key for this carry offense is we're going to run north and south. We're not going to try to get fancy on the outside. We, you know, I haven't seen too many sweeps on the outside or anything like that by by carry. You know, most of the runs have been just basically, you know, we're going right at you and you got to stop us. I mean, if you're carry, yeah, I mean, you're under no hurry or no rush. Just you want to just keep the chains moving. Third and two. This is Steen up the middle to the 40 and a Dale's concrete first down. Big hole on the left side for Steen to run through too. So the Blue Devils keeping the ball moving here. 3.30 left to go in the third quarter on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. It's a three point lead for Columbus Grove. 
And the Blue Devils in business. A drive that started on their own four. They're out to their own 40. And I think both these coaches knew that coming into this game, the key to this game is going to be line of scrimmage and who could control yep. the line of scrimmage. Smiley rolling is going to take off with it. Shows off that speed on the sideline and pushed out of bounds around the 43-yard line. Good for another Dale's concrete first down. So a little change of pace there. Smiley showing off the wheels going around the end on this one. Yeah, he did a nice job getting out there you know, rather quickly. Uh, and that's again another luxury if you got you got three big backs that can pound the inside all, all night long and then you get an opportunity to move it around to the outside where you know the linebackers are pretty much keying on the inside in plus territory now at the Grove 45 yard line and another handoff this is steam chugging the ball forward out to the 41. Well, that's what they did in the first drive of the third quarter. You know, it's just kind of pounded down 52 yards, just keep moving forward, moving forward, keep the chains moving until they scored. And they're doing the same thing again this time around. No need to put the ball in the air. If you keep your, you know, each of your downs manageable at second and six and get five yards on the first down, you don't have to throw the ball. Carey has dominated time of possession here in this third quarter. We're under two and a half remaining in it. And Carey has had the ball for uh, just about the entirety of the third quarter as uh, that time Steen across the 40 to the 38. Make it a third down and four coming up for the Blue Devils. Take that third and three, excuse me. A big down here for Columbus Grove. They've got to stop the momentum that Kerry's been building so far in this here in the second half. Columbus Grove crowd making some noise here. Third and three, looking for their Bulldogs to make a stop. And they are oh, going they to tackle behind the line at the 41 was Austin Niedercore as I saw a number of Bulldogs getting back there on the stop. Of course, Loudon Akmudi was in the center of that particular hurricane and it's fourth down. Now, I'm not sure which one jumped on the back of somebody else to get to the running back, but you know, hey, Whatever it takes. And it's like Off Moody and company in on the stop. Fourth and six coming up, and Carey is going to go for it. Well, they felt pretty comfortable so far being able to get six yards. So. In the eye. Ball at the 41. Smiley going to throw it. Looking to pass. Is going to tuck and run. Trying to get the first down with his legs. Ball comes out. Columbus Grove is going to come up with it. So a turnover on downs, essentially, as the Blue Devils cough up the football and the Bulldogs get it back. So they are in business with 57 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Big, big play for Columbus Grove. Boy, I'll tell you what, Smiley didn't have any place to run out there. A nice gesture by Kyle Lathrop, too, to pick up the football and hand it to the referees. <laughs> Says, Wait, this is, we stopped him. This is secure. You can have it now. <laughs> yeah. Now we've seen Barraza, you know, reel off a touchdown in 15 seconds after an opportunity came their way. So let's see if they do it again. Best fakes. Oh, look out. Look out. Wide right open. Zach look Reynolds out. at the 40. He is going to take it all the way for a 62-yard strike. A Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown. That may have beat the 15-second rule, though. I'll tell you what. I think that was an eight-second drive. <laughs> wow, he was wide open. I don't know. You know, he that fake the handoff to Barraza, drew the, all the linebackers and defensive backs up in, you know, expecting Barraza to run the ball, and next thing you know, you know, you got Zach Reynolds standing out there. So Columbus Grove wasting no time and eight second 62 yard drive. That's that's just about as efficient as you can possibly yeah, that, be. <laughs> that was one well of a play. Lee's extra point is blocked. 
So no extra point is going to keep it a nine point game. 48 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's a 30-21 Columbus Grove lead. This is high school football action on WOSN. Welcome back to Nice Instant Replay Sponsor is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's, our extra point and field goal sponsor this evening. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. How about an eight second, 62 yard drive for you, Columbus Grove fans? A little pitch and catch action. Landon Best to Zach Reynolds for a 30 to 21 lead here in Vastoria. And I'll tell you what, Patrick, that's the, that's the respect that Kerry has for Trent and Raza too, because they faked it to him. They hand off to him. That drew everybody in, including defensive backs. You know, just thinking that is going to run the ball, and that left Zach Reynolds out there in, in no man's land all by himself. And, you know, Best picked him up, threw it to him, and that for for a 62-yard touchdown and just a great play call all the way around and a great job by uh, Best and, and Zach Reynolds and Trent Bros as well. Saw that on the structure instant replay and you're right, you know, when the defense collapsed on Barraza, Reynolds was wide open and uh, was not going to get caught on that particular play. So Columbus Grove able to stop a long carry drive and then score immediately and now we're going to see another short kick that is just uh, falling on top of the 38 yard line and that's where carry will take over for this next drive and carry has uh, dominated time of possession in this third quarter but yet it's columbus grove that has come up with six points yeah and now it's up to the grove defense again to to kind of stop these guys and, and show them that we you know we can keep you you know from getting in the end zone but i tell you what carrie's been impressive here in the second half they have no you know, nothing to show for but they've been pretty impressive they got that one touchdown starting off the first drive of the third quarter you know but that last one the clumps group came up big on defense smiley in the backfield and is going to keep it and run out to the 40 yard line ball comes out and columbus grove has got it bulldog football wow Number 62, I think, recovered it. That'd be Lathrop. Yeah, that will be Lathrop. Make that, I believe, the third carry turnover tonight, their second fumble. And Columbus Grove has the ball at the 41 of carry. I think it was Ock Moody that knocked it loose, and then Lathrop just picked it up. Best hand off to Barraza. Barraza. Oh my. Get across the 35 to 34. Guys ripping at the football, trying to get it back for carry. Barraza sidestepping the whole way, too, while he's doing <laughs> yeah. it. So I can run sideways, too. Look yes. This. <laughs> the 17 seconds left in the third quarter, likely the final play of this quarter. And almost, you almost got him again. Yeah, almost got him again. That'd been the third time. And we'll see if we actually do get a play. They don't have to run a play if they don't want to here in this third quarter. And it looks like that is what is going to happen. So that's three quarters in the books. Columbus Grove with a 30 to 21 lead and looking for six more as we head to the fourth here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Final 12 minutes of this one. Columbus Grove with a 30-21 lead over Cary. This is the sixth all-time meeting between these two teams. Cary holding on to a 3-2 lead. Grove looking to tie that one up on the way to a regional final tonight. Here is Trenton Barraza on second down and four 
And is very close to first down territory and is going to get that Dales concrete first down. Patrick Hamler and Darrett Nevergall here with you on what has been a, a really great contest here at Fostoria tonight. Yeah, it certainly has been. Two powerhouses just slugging it away, you know, back and forth, back and forth, and, you know, just, just good, hard-fought football. I mean, you know, no frills, no nothing. The turnover battle is, is in key in this one here, and Columbus Grove right now is winning that one. First and 10, here is Barraza making that cut inside. And I'll tell you what, that arm tackle I think saved a touchdown as Barraza looked like he had a full head of steam and was going across the 25 for a pickup of six. Yeah, and, and defensive back wasn't going to get over there in time to, to pick him up either. So you're right, if he would able to break that one tackle, he would have been gone. And of course, a full quarter to play, but you have to, you, you get the sense that if Columbus Grove can put it in the end zone here, that there, there might not be enough time for Kerry to mount any real serious comeback in this one. No, because Kerry would have to go to the air, and that, and that has not been that successful for them. You know, they had a couple of successful passes that have been coming down you know, out of nowhere, but uh, really it's not their forte. So, you know, if they if they get behind but two touchdowns, you know, they're definitely going to have to go to the air a little bit more. Yep. And I don't know if that's really what they want to do. Third and one, and that's going to be third and six as a false start. And Lathrop with the visceral reaction, want to get a little ahead of things. and. That'll back them up five yards and they'll try it again. Yeah, so you, you have to sense a, sen a sense of desperation for Kerry's defense. You got to think they, they have to keep them out of the end zone. You can allow a field goal, still a two possession game in that case, but if Columbus Grove puts this one in the end zone, you, Kerry would try to avoid that at all costs in this, yeah, you on this got one. Your work cut out for you then. And this is to Barraza. Barraza slipping a tackle to the 25. And is going to get some of that yardage back and bring up a fourth and short. And with that calculus in mind, we'll see what Andy Schaefer wants to do here. Hmm. This could be a tough fourth and four. And the Bulldogs are going to go for it. Best is going to keep it. It is going to be at the 24-yard line and stopped. So Carey bows up and gets the turnover on downs. So the Blue Devils with time and opportunity here with 9.35 remaining in the game. Big, big stop by the Carey defense right there. Yeah. And an interesting play calling again for the Columbus Grove, but Jill. They knew that they'd be keen on Barraza, expecting him to carry the ball in fourth mm -hmm. and four. So why not go with your quarterback and let him run the ball? He, he's carried quite a few times this season as it is. But, you know, big stop by Kerry. Now we'll see how the Blue Devils go about this next drive as it's more of the same. Diving out to the 29-yard line as that was Broadman, who, you know, we mentioned is was the guy who didn't run a ton in this offense, only 16 carries heading into this game, and he's got at least half of that here in this ton contest alone. Yeah, he's carried most of the load in, in, instead of Eli Steen for this team. Haven't seen Alex Putnam very much, or if at all really since the first quarter, and now here is Steen looking for that right side out to the 31, 32 yard line, and he, you have to think that this is this is great. This is good if you're carry, but you have to think, man, you got to break something open, whether yeah, it's on know. the ground or through the air. You have to get some yards and chunks here with with 8:42 left. And that's you know how big can that field goal be then? You know, even if carry can you know drive it down there and score, they're still going to be three points shy. And, mm -hmm. You know, that's huge when you got a field goal kicker. Third and three, and flags come out. And I think they're going to get offsides on Columbus Grove. They will. So this could be a Dales concrete first down. And as the Blue Devils, via the penalty, keep the drive alive. Tough break for the Bulldogs. Well, the 
So that'll put the ball on the 26 yard line and get the Blue Devils a fresh set of sticks. But the big thing is the clock continues to run down in close to the eight minute mark. Yep. Coming up on eight minutes. Remaining on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. 30 to 21, Columbus Grove carry with the football. And that run attempt met at the 35 as Ockmoody was having none of Carter Smiley's run attempt there. Ockmoody, a 5'8, 185 pound senior. And I'll tell you what, he plays bigger than that. 739, Dale. He said the leading tackler on this Grove team with 114 tackles coming in. Tell you what, you uh, you feel that 30, 35 pound difference according to the roster. Oh yeah. Especially when they get a running start. Smiley rolling on second down. Rolling to that right side is gonna put this one up and nearly intercepted, throwing into double coverage. Was looking for Broadman down the sideline and there was plenty of coverage down there as that was uh, Jamison Raider and Grant Eversall in there on defense for the Bulldogs. Third down. Yeah, I never saw thought he had that ball for the interception. Boy, that was a tough throw to throw into double coverage like that. From this angle, wasn't sure maybe Smiley was just trying to throw it away or, or what, trying anything to avoid the sack. It does void the interception in that case. Third and 10. Trips left for the Blue Devils. 7.15 remaining. Pressure coming. Smiley torquing this one up again. The pass is tipped and incomplete. Pass intended down there on the sideline for Dominic Yeeter. And it's fourth down and a go for it situation, I would imagine, for the Blue Devils. The only mistake Smiley made on that one is he didn't throw it on Trip Phoenix. Oh, we got side. a flag on the 36 yard line. And it looks like it's going to be against Carey. And it looks like that uh, Andy Schaefer is going to decline the penalty. Well, he pointed toward Columbus Grove, but I think it was a Carey penalty. There we go. Legal man downfield on Carey. Give him a shot there. <laughs> Every play Again, is if you're interested in being an official for the OHSAA, they are happy to take your application, provide you training, and uh, come be a part of a great crew that is OHSAA officiating. I have uh, actually one of my high school friends is an official, the yeah. OHSAA. Well, you get a he loves it too. Here. He loves his job. He, he likes doing it. I, I, Basketball is his favorite. He does some football too. Fourth and ten. Pressure coming, Smiley oh, in trouble line. and nothing doing. Wow. Gutsy, gutsy call there by John Bershman and his coaching staff. Come in on the blitz to see the structure instant replay. Just a flood on that left side of Carey's offensive line and all Smiley could do was try and run away, but just too many guys, just too much speed. And that is going to put Columbus Grove in business at the carry 25 with 7.05 remaining and a chance to uh, really slam the door shut on this one. Yeah, absolutely. They can ice this one off really quickly. If they can just, you know, and don't be in a hurry. Just try to get down there and get your get the touchdown. You know, eat, eat some of that time off the clock. This snap. Off the instead. That offset eye, I think, for Columbus Grove, and they'll get a couple yards there on first down. Pushed back. <laughs> That's the 24-yard line. Winner of this contest is going to play Bluffton in the Region 22 final, and if it uh, holds out and it appears to be Columbus Grove, that will be a rematch of their phenomenal Week 10 matchup. It's always interesting when you can get the rivals in a playoff situation. Barasa across the 20 to the 19, and they'll say he stopped at the 20, third down. If that ends up the case, you might want to play 50-50 that week. <laughs> 
Well, if you want to get service in Bluffton or Columbus Grove that night, I'm afraid you're out of luck. <laughs> Those, those two towns support their football quite a bit, and they will be in attendance wherever that football game is played. Third down and five. Barraza is gobbled up behind the 20 yard line. So fourth down coming up, and as it so happens, Barraza right there in the middle of the field. So it's a good ball placement if they wanna come out here and attempt a what would be a 37 yard field goal we haven't seen any action though from <laughs> evan uh, veerhoff uh, i don't think that's going to be the case so they are going to go for it fourth and five best alone in the backfield back to pass scrambling pressure coming and is going to run for it, but not going to get enough. He's going to be dropped to the 20 turnover on downs. So the carry defense making a play, but they'll get the football back. And now with only five minutes to play with in their fourth quarter. That's a good, good thing, you know, to run off some more time off the clock and give it an opportunity to get the first down. But you know, now the Bulldog defense again is going to have to be stout and try to stop this carry defense or carry offense and keep them right where they're at. Nothing else. The drive by Columbus Grove chewed off an additional uh, two minutes and change, so less time for Carrie to work with. And now the Blue Devils in a position where they're going to have to score here. And this time it is once again Ock Moody back there for the sack. Yeah, Blankemeyer back there too, too as well, yes. The junior defensive end coming in there. And that's the sad thing for Kerry right now is because they, you know, Columbus Grove knows what they have to do. Right. So you're sending you're sending the house. And that, that last one looked like it was more of a coverage sack. Smiley just really seeing nowhere to throw the ball. Rushing four here on second and 13. Smiley looking, firing pass is caught at the 44 yard line. Another they're gonna say it's incomplete. Couldn't get that requisite foot in bounds. And that'll bring third down. Nice effort there by Carey to try and bring that one in. And it'll be third and 13. Now, if you think of Columbus Girls have been bringing the house up to this point, you haven't seen anything now. <laughs> well, third and 13. Everybody's just running down the field trying to find an open spot. Good coverage by the secondary for Columbus Grove, though. So really on the passes that Smiley has completed, there hasn't been a ton of, of open space. It really yeah. has been the receiver making a play around a lot of Columbus Grove guys. So we'll see what happens. Pressure coming. This is going to be a quick pass out at the 22-yard line, but nice open field tackle. There is Baxter getting the job done. Pass completed to Yeeter, and it's going to bring up fourth and long. Now, this could be an interesting play call. Fourth and seven at this stage. And so they're going to go for it once again, as expected on fourth and seven. Smiley back to pass. He's going to take off and run to the 32-yard line and is going to get the Dales Concrete first down as he has stopped just shy of the 35-yard line. So able to convert on fourth down and keep the drive alive with the clock ticking against Carey now. Yeah, it certainly is down to three minutes and 43 seconds left to go and counting as it continues to move. And, you know, that field goal is bigger in life now. 3.33 left here in this fourth quarter. Coming up on three and a half minutes. Smiley back to pass, uncorks this one. Has a little separation with Phoenix and nice defensive play. It was like Phoenix was gonna bring that in. And instead the uh, application of force right there just in time by Grant Eversall to knock that ball out of his hand, second down. Grant Eversall, another one of the juniors on this Columbus Group team. If you look across the line on this Columbus Group team, you know, Landon Bell is a sophomore, Trenton Barraza is a, just a junior, Eversall a junior, you know, Brady Basinger a freshman, you know. It, there are just a lot of guys coming back for this Group team next year. Smiley, pressure coming. Smiley, nowhere to go. 
but down. Lathrop. He's been doing that Jordan shrug yeah, all game. Yeah, yeah. I know you picked up on that, but every time he's making a play out and then carries backfield, he kind of shrugs his arms like that. I assume it, it's Michael Jordan, but. Well, that time uh, Smiley turned around and ran right smack dab into the throat. So there really hasn't been a lot of places for him to, to run once he's taken off. Now Smiley pressured again, trying to get away and throws it. Desperate to not get dropped to the 20-yard line. And, and they're going to mark him down where he tried to throw the ball. So fourth and a cruise ship coming up for Carey. I'll tell you, once you got into this situation for this Carey Blue Devils, you know, you knew what was going to happen with the pro defense. And, yep. You know, they definitely are going to bring the house. And they're, you know, they are so quick and so good at attacking and pursuing that you're just going uh, have any place to run. Ball on the 20. Carey has to get to the 44 to keep this drive alive. Fourth and 24. Smiley back to pass, letting this one go, looking for Phoenix downfield and knocked away. And the Bulldogs will take over at the 20-yard line with 218, which should all but salt this one away for the Bulldogs. It should. And again, another great play better by Grant Eversall back here in the defensive back. Now this time Phoenix wasn't able to pull down that pass, which he did a couple times in the first half. But you know, good coverage by the Bulldogs, and you know, again, you know, two minutes and 18 seconds left to go, a nine-point lead. They can definitely put this away. First down coming up for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, and our first down sponsor tonight has been Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. 218 remaining in this one is Columbus Grove. Looking to finish off the Blue Devils tonight. And here is Barraza to the 20 yard line to the 19, and that's it. The Bulldogs are 2 10 and counting away from a rematch with the Bluffton Pirates. And you're going to see a consistent feeding of uh, Trent Barraza, I think. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see any more passing in this one. The no, Metzger Financial so. Services timeout on the field. We'll take it as well. 209 left. Columbus Grove up by nine. You're watching high school football action on WOSN. Back here at Fostoria, 209 remaining in the game. Columbus Grove with a nine point lead in the red zone. Well, 211 <laughs> remaining. They put two, two seconds back on the clock which fits into this game as much as anything else. Yes, certainly has. Landon Best with the handoff to Barraza, pushing the pile ahead to the 15. By a whole lot of blue Mill by uh, <laughs> third down and about four. Four or five coming up and another Metzger Financial Services timeout here on the field as they talk this one over. And of course, it, again, uh, barring something entirely crazy happening, Columbus Grove is going to win tonight and head to the regional final against Bluffton. And that was a, a very tough matchup between the two teams. And heading into the game, really, Bluffton was undefeated. And you thought, well, maybe you know, maybe the Pirates got him this year. Uh, Columbus Grove came in and, uh, and took care of business. It was a low-scoring affair. It was, a, it was a physical affair. And I would imagine that... It, we're going to see something very similar when Bluffton and Columbus Grove get together next week. No, absolutely. And it's going to be a grudge match for Bluffton, no doubt about it. As, as they had shut down every uh, you know Northwest Conference opponent up until that game and, you know, turn around and lose 14-7 to to Columbus Grove and turn and Grove hence wins the Northwest Conference with that game too. And so, yeah, it's going to be a packed house. You know, it's going to be a, a really hard-hitting game. Two mm -hmm. great defenses going at it. I mean, again, so every marking of, you know, having one of the best games in the area. Best finishes it off. Laura Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown. 16 yards. And that will do it here from Fostoria. 36-21, Columbus Grove is two minutes away from moving on. And best made that look real easy. Yes, he did. 
There wasn't anybody touching him as he went in. I think a little bit of resolved by Cleary on that one. <laughs> you know. Lee's fans versus B Chicken. Extra point is on the way. Up and it is good. Two minutes left in this one. 37 21. Columbus Grove on top. This is high school playoff football action on WOSN. Welcome back. 16 point lead for Columbus Grove. 37 21. And final two minutes of this one. And a, uh, you know, it, it, it looks like it is a bit more competitive of a matchup than maybe the score would indicate at this point. Columbus Grove really able to pull away uh, very back and forth really throughout the game, the second half. Uh, there were plenty of opportunities. I think you look at this game and you think that just when one team looked like they were really about to assert themselves, the other team was able to answer, but Columbus Grove ultimately gets the, the final word in this one. Yeah, it certainly was. And, and when you saw it coming out in the start of the second half, it looked like Kerry was going to establish their running game again. You know what they like to do, and, and they drove right down the field with their big guy in, in Eli Stern, and he was able to take it in. And you thought at that point, you know, this this is a carry team that you know can really dominate once they get the running game going. But Columbus Grove came right back again, and I'll tell you what, two big plays for Columbus Grove: a 62-yard pass play from Best to Zach Reynolds, and then the 63-yarder in the first half by Trent Barraza on the run. You know, were keys for this Columbus Grove team. And, but give it all the credit in the world, too, to this defense, Columbus Grove. They bent a lot in this game, but they didn't break, and that was the biggest thing. And Smiley, nowhere to go. Picks up a couple of yards on that play as he's tackled the 40 yard line. You know, Kerry came into this game on a nine game winning streak, and actually the Blue Devils have won 36 of their last 39 games, going back to their. Uh, state championship year back in 2021. So this is a carry team that has been really good for quite a while as we got a flag on this play. False start is going to back carry up. And, uh, you know, carry actually in that 36 of 39, they lost three games in a row. They lost their last game last year, and they lost their first two games of this year and then rattled off another Northern 10 uh, championship in were, uh, it was funny to look at, you look at both these teams, Labor Day weekend, they were both one and two. Yeah, yeah. They've won nine in a row. Looks like Columbus Grove is gonna go to 10 in a row, but a, uh, a terrific uh, carry team coming up on the short end of the scoreboard tonight. Oh, yeah, it is. And if you look at the carry, you know, their roster, of their starters, a lot of seniors out there for this carry team. This will be their last game this in, that they play this year. You know, so there's, you know, they got a couple, you know, seen, seen as a sophomore, but, you know, they got a couple juniors and stuff. But, you know, Broadman's a senior, Smiley's a senior, Putman's a senior, Pinkerton's a senior. So, you know, they, they're going to lose a lot of players off this carry team. But, you know, they had a great run this season. You know, like I said, started out slow. Both teams started out slow. Uh, but then from that point on. So a incompletion there. Thought there was a interception by Barraza on top of everything else he's done tonight. Let's throw a pick in there for good yeah, measure. Why not? <laughs> but they'll say incomplete. And of course, as we mentioned, uh, it'll be Columbus Grove taking on Bluffton. Bluffton victorious uh, this week against uh, Toledo Ottawa Hills, uh, 34 to nothing. So uh, Bluffton certainly asserting their dominance in the regional semifinal, and uh, they'll have a full head of steam as they take on Columbus Grove next week in a in a, in a place to be decided. We don't know yep. where that game is going to be yet. That's going to be at. Like we've got our wish list. We, 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 right we have suggestions <laughs> that we will love to come as we uh, see here on the blitz on fourth down and another turnover on down sports for the Bulldogs so it'll be victory formation coming up for Columbus Grove as they advance to the uh, regional final uh, yeah as we said again against Bluffton and we, we certainly have our uh, our uh, particular preferences as to where we like to see that game yeah uh, you know oh it's just he doesn't listen to me so they don't, they don't listen they don't. to us so <laughs> and who knows? I mean, you know, they may send both of them to Timbuktu. I don't have any right. idea where they might end up. But you know, I interviewed uh, Jerry Snodgrass, former director of the OHSA, a couple of years ago, and you know, he made a really great insight. It was, you know, just because we think that a school would would be a great place for it, or that's a halfway point, doesn't necessarily mean that that school is is allowing us to be there for mm -hmm. any number of reasons. And there are right. a number of reasons, of course. You know, Fostoria takes a lot of people to 
facilitate this and make sure the media and the fans and everyone can come in. So it's a lot for the school to do, but uh, just because you think, well, hey, you know, Bluffton, Columbus Grove, why not have it? And then you kind of pick your location. Doesn't necessarily mean that that location is available. So yeah, Absolutely. And, you know, for any number of reasons, like you said, Patrick, I mean, there's maybe something else going on that night or whatever, but... You know, I mean, you, you, you try to go, like, in between, but, uh, you know, between Bluffton and Columbus Grove is, is what suitors corn maze. They really can't play a football game there. Uh, so, you know, you have to adjust and, and, and make some adjustments. Well, you could try, <laughs> but I don't know. It's when you send the guy out and you can't find him again. That's, that's right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the corn maze will be done in about yeah. uh, 15 seconds if we do that. Final seconds tick off the clock in this one as Columbus Grove takes care of the Cary Blue Devils tonight. Your final here from Fostoria, 37 to 21. Columbus Grove moving on to the regional final. Once again, they will take on the Bluffton Pirates for an NWC championship rematch coming up next week. That is going to do it for our broadcast here tonight from Fostoria Memorial Stadium. Want to thank our terrific crew, Zach Keith, Abby Beck for uh, helping us out and putting this together. Megan Sherrick, Nick Fraley back at the studio uh, for this game and other games, they, all the stuff that they put together and do for us back there. Our final score tonight, 37-21 Columbus Grove victorious over Cary for Darn Evergall and our entire WOSN staff. I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long everyone from Fostoria.